Hello everyone, we are live yet again, and this is my author's chat of the week, and I will be joined shortly by my co-host, which I see is, who is already online. Let's see if she's here. There we go. Hello! Hi! How are Hi, you? How are you? Perfect, how are you? <laughs> We're great! <laughs> great. I'm so We're glad so we can meet today. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to meet yeah. you. Thanks for inviting yeah. us. Not a problem. So I just wanted to let you know, in case you've never seen one of these lives before, kind of how I do things is I will let you introduce yourself, what you write, um, however you like to, you know, inform people about you and your work, and then I'll do the same, and then from there we'll go where the day takes us. Okay, cool. sounds great. Well, I'm Vera Landis. I'm Veronica. And this she's my daughter and co-author. Um, mm -hmm. We have written um we wrote first a series of five books called the lodestar diaries um and they are out there on amazon um and they're a young adult kind of sci-fi series um a lot of romance and stuff you know <laughs> and then we've got um a spin-off that comes at the end of that and also a prequel trilogy so all together there's nine books out there and the, the prequel trilogy is, um, sorry, it's a Red Beard series, and it's a pirate series, so. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, let me ask quickly right while I'm thinking about it. So you have nine books, and you said Red Beard, Pirates. I heard sci-fi before. Are they all in the same universe, or are they separated completely yes. different? Oh, yes, okay. totally same universe. So yeah, we wrote the five books and then we were like, we just really liked some of our pirate characters and wanted to go more in depth. And so we wrote a prequel characters trilogy. Characters that didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, characters that were, um, shall I say, gone <laughs> by the time <laughs> that, the first, that the five book series started. So, so yeah, they, there's some death in those books, but, <laughs> but we try to keep them fun. <laughs> What yeah. kind of age range are your books? Do you, what, what would you categorize them as? Um, they're mostly young adult, but we have I have a little sister that read them and enjoyed them. And we've also really had um, some people that were much older than young adults that have really yeah. enjoyed them too. So <laughs> kind of a, a range. A, yeah, I think that's the fun thing about the young adult genre. Mm -hmm. It does span things depending on, you know, what you're writing because it is a wide range of age technically i right. think it i think it's 13 either 12 or 13 all the way to 17 if you follow the definition so that's a wide age range with in uh young right. person's development <laughs> exactly well and i'm 42 and it's my favorite genre so <laughs> hey i love it i absolutely love it well for anybody who's joining in and doesn't know me, I am Katherine Y. Bell, and I'm an author as well of three different epic fantasy series. I think that's a genre I'm going to stick with for a while, but as we were talking about young adults as an age bracket, it does vary widely, and so do my series. Uh, the first series, I, I guess I'll kind of go from younger to older. I have a young adult series as well. It's The Jed Chronicles. I have two books out now, the first one being The Twelve Tasks, and the third one will is slotted to release early next year. And recently did a cover reveal for that, so that's really exciting. But Indeed. this is just a magical, thank you. It's a magical multiverse with 12 worlds that contain all sorts of mythological beast beings, creatures. And it's a cosmic battle, good and evil kind of scenario, chosen one vibes in that one. So that one's just a lot of fun and on the happier, I guess, adventure side of fantasy. And getting a little darker, I have a new adult series of four. They were my debut series. They're called the Incarn Saga as a whole. They start with Asara's Claws. And it's set in a kingdom on the verge of war where both the shapeshifters and the humans have to unite in order to defend themselves against a bigger threat. Unless they can't. And that is the question that we kind of start off with from the beginning of that series. And that is my only complete series at the moment. The third series oh, wow. I have that I'm also releasing simultaneously to my young adult, don't advise it, is an adult, um, very dark fantasy, um, think Vi Vikings, but it's uh, based in and around Norse mythology. So you're going to deal with Yggdrasil, the world tree, the nine realms. And it's, yeah, it's a dark retelling of Nordic myth. And so there are seven out and the eighth is on pre-order right now for that series. But oh, that wow. is where it all comes out. <laughs> 
That sounds really right up our alley. <laughs> we'll have to check those I love out. It. I love it. So, okay, going back. So, how did you two decide you wanted to co author a young adult sci fi fantasy? <laughs> I'll okay. let you take this one. So, um, Fourth of July, actually, we were watching fireworks, and I'm an artist, oh, and okay. I'm she hates fireworks I hate fireworks they just drag me along (laughs) um so I was drawing and I drew this girl that just she was really mysterious and not what I normally drew and so she was like okay she has a story let's figure it out so that night we figured out like parts of her background and stuff and months later we both have these dreams. Yeah, that's crazy. That, like, kind of match together. Like, the same night, she goes, I had this dream last night that went with our books, and I was like, so did I. And so we started talking about them, and we were like, oh, my gosh. And we came yeah. up with, like, more of the plot. And, and then I don't, I can't write full, like, entire stories by myself because my attention span <laughs> won't allow it. So she was like, you're never going to write the books. Can I write them? I couldn't stop thinking about it. I just kept thinking about the story and I kept, we kept having more characters pop in our heads that we wanted to, you know, and how they were going to be involved. And I mean, I just couldn't, couldn't stop. So then NaNoWriMo came along and we had actually, we had met Marissa Meyer and she had talked about how um, she was inspired to write the Lunar Chronicles by Mm -hmm. writing the first book during NaNoWriMo. And I went, well, she can do it. I can do it. So I sat down and wrote the first book that month. And then it we was like pretty it. much like a month per book. Like I just sat there and just like. Was it last NaNoWriMo that you began this? I'm- no, it, was 20, it was during COVID. So it was in 2020. It was like the end. Yeah, it was 2020. So I started November 1st, 2020. And then we had. Had the first three books out like July fourth. July fourth last year. We tried to publish them July fourth. Yeah, stuff went weird. And then we just kind of we had been working. You know, I had all the rest of them kind of sitting there, like we were just editing and all that. And then um, we just put them all out at one time just to get them all out there. It was probably not the best um, marketing move, but you know, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I, I don't blame you. I am that. I'll figure it out as I go kind of person to my detriment. So I'm always the last one to kind of learn the proper, proper ways to do things. And I always try more error than not going through the whole process myself. So I understand that though. I have to say you having all those books already drafted at once was definitely a step up than myself. I'm still trying to (laughs) get to a point where I can feel like I can do a theoretical rapid release, but whoo, five books. (laughs) (laughs) Do you self-publish too, or you, do you have a traditional publisher? Um, yes, I'm a self-published author at the moment. I mean, I don't mind. I I like to keep it open in case I want to go hybrid down the line. Mm-hmm. But right. right now, I all my series are self-published. And depending on what I release, I may or may not query. It just has to feel right for that particular series. Mm-hmm. Um, for my novellas, I never query just because most... Uh, literary agents don't necessarily want novellas. They want larger right. books. Yeah. And then on the flip side, my other books are so large that they don't fit in the categories. And so when I was querying my YA, they were like, you do realize it's a third size too big. You need to like cut <laughs> cut down a huge yeah. chunk of your book <laughs> in order you're for like, it to wrote, Yeah, you were like, like, I wrote those words for a reason. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I could edge you out maybe, but not a third of the book. So I do, no. I do write needy books and then, you know, the novellas were my challenge to kind of write smaller and try to get into that concept of releasing at a quicker pace than a book a year, <laughs> maybe two. Yeah. Because, again, oh, you're doing I, so I great that you have books. so many out. <laughs> well, I've also been publishing since 2016 and oh, wow. kind of, so it's been a while. It's been a while and kind of like you once kind of COVID hit, it allowed me to kind of reassess what I was doing wrong with um, the publishing process and marketing process. And so I kind of took that year to re-educate myself on a lot of things and have been able to put out more work at a more rapid pace since then. So that was a good thing that came out of that uh, shutdown. (laughs) Right. Exactly. I feel the same way. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. So let me ask. 
since you kind of collaborated to come up with the main, I'm assuming it was the main character, who named the character and where did the name come from? I think she I, named I already had the, the main character and her name, and um, I actually had another um, character that was playing out in my head. I had a name for him and everything, but he just wouldn't fit anywhere that I tried to put him. Yeah. So we introduced him as her love interest yeah. and it worked. And it was and... so great. And those those are the two, like the main characters for the first book. So it, it yeah. kind of like, it follows them. It's kind of like the Lunar Chronicles in that it follows those two for the first yeah. book. And then they stay in the story and they're still a big part of the story, but then each book kind of follows a new set of characters. We have it's like okay. probably too many characters, but they're great. We love them so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna ask that because that's a very popular approach to writing um romance or fantasy romance is if you have a mm -hmm. series, you know you have your main focus couple for each book and right. you'll have the tie-ins from all the prior ones. I mean, I think I've never read it, so someone could correct me, but I I've been watching the series Bridgerton whenever they release a series, and it's like that each season is a new couple, but it's based mm -hmm. off the book. So that, again, that well, whole yeah, romance that thing. Have a pain. Yeah, that's so neat. I like it. I kind of like it when they do that. It's like a nice change of pace, but you mm -hmm. still get to keep your people. And yeah, mm -hmm. and we some of our books have some like side couples too. You know, so like yeah. some of there's little side things going. We on kind of don't have. We have a lot of main characters, <laughs> but we also have like a lot of like minor characters that kind of still have like a lot of focus on them you know what I mean so like our little side characters aren't always aren't necessarily side characters you get to know them really well too so what about yours that. how do you do it when you do your series well since I don't really categorize categorize mine as fantasy board um you know epic dark fantasy adventure portal I mean I could name all the subgenres, but I do keep fantasy I mean romance elements in all of them because it's a slice of life but that's right. not necessarily yeah. the focus for my work. Yeah, um, with that, that said, I mean, obviously all the main characters are going to have the whole romantic feels and, you know, for someone or multiple characters along their storyline. But I typically follow um, one viewpoint from a main character throughout the whole series. So that's how all three of them have worked so far. Oh, cool. I have different ideas of maybe um, some other ways to approach writing for other books down the line. But right now I like that kind of one viewpoint approach and following them. But that also makes it a little complicated when you're trying to decide who knows what and how much does your main character know and how much can you right. reveal to the reader if your main character doesn't know it and you're only following one Because you know everything. Exactly. No? Yeah, I'm trying that with the with the couple series that I'm writing and it's different because I'm used to kind of jumping from like the viewpoint of one character kind of to the yeah, that's how mine viewpoint is. of another. And yeah, and so it's different having to focus on one person. <laughs> Yeah. totally different approach okay so so let me just clarify you you say you do switch between the two main characters and you're each so yeah, yeah so like um okay. kind of uh what's a good example so like if you've read the percy saying, jackson not not the percy jackson but like the chronicles. heroes of olympus or yeah even yeah the lunar chronicles does it too so like it's written in third I'm person. I'm checking my books really quick. Yeah. But <laughs> when... your, your bookshelf right there. Reference guide. Yeah. Oh, man. She has, like, I so have, many books. It's I have, books. like, six bookshelves. Yeah, there's there. this whole room is bookshelves. If you can see this whole room, it's, like, all books. But oh, yeah. um, it's, like, so, like, one chapter, um, whoever the main character or the character is that we're focusing on in that chapter, it's kind of, it's still written in third person, but you can kind of tell it's, like, the way that they... Think, are thinking and the way that they're seeing things yeah and um yeah, yeah and, well, the was like they both die at the end oh yeah they both die at the end he does that and silvera does that is that first person though or no no that's not first person it's for it is third person so yeah, yeah person. it is it's like that but <laughs> I mean, hey that's the thing it's like i've been trying to read and challenge myself on more modern literature current fantasy because my i'm that weird one who i would grab the iliad over uh, yeah. uh you know a more <laughs> got it. a recent yes. tale but that's just the way you know what i like but with that said i've been trying to ever since joining this community read a wider variety of 
uh, fantasy books that are more current. And it is interesting, the very different dynamic of the first person people and the third person. I'm a third person writer, one viewpoint, but third person. And then there are all those people who enjoy first person, first and foremost. So it is always interesting yeah. talking to different authors and I seeing what like there's, they prefer. Right? I enjoy both. Yeah, me too. I as feel like well, there's a time and place for both of them. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's well written. Yeah, exactly. I think there's like a time and a place. I think that some stories are just better told through first the person, first person. Some yeah. is better one point of view only. Some are better. Yeah. Changed. It's so, so you say you've been trying to read like um, more modern books. So like what's the best one that you've read lately that you would recommend to us? Oh, my. Oh, no. <laughs> <She's putting me laughs> on right now. Um. <laughs> Oh, Lord. See, I know I'm also bad with names. I've been reading, I recently read Song of Achilles, but then again, it goes back to the whole Iliad thing. So mm -hmm. I did read that one recently. And there were certain, I think I had to get into it for a while because first I've person wasn't it. my go-to choice. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to get used to it. But in the end, I, I really enjoy the story. I, you know, I could tell from my familiarity with um, Greco-Roman myth, how well and how knowledgeable the author was. So I did really enjoy that book based on my personal taste. It is very different because, again, it's romance forward and that's mm -hmm. not usually my go to. But I've been right. also enjoying reading a lot of um, indie authors here and kind of, you know, getting to know different authors and swapping books with them and reading different things. So I'm reading right now. See if I remember how to pronounce the name. I'm probably going to miss the pronounce the main character's name. Talon and the Tree by Stephanie Dos Santos, who's also on this platform. And so I'm reading oh, hers, and it's um, based off Caribbean uh, mythology. And oh, that I'm sounds that cool. One. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to check that one out. Talon and the Tree. Remember that one. Talon and I, the I, Tree. I, and I, she, I, she's on yeah. here, too, as well, but um, have enjoyed that. So how about you? Have you kind of gotten into reading other clock app authors I have to try to that's kind read. of my job <laughs> yeah I mean there's sometimes we have we love to read and we read together a lot um she's I have assigned to me I'm a single to go figure stuff out though <laughs> yeah that's true I have I'm a single mom right now and have four kids and so I don't have as much time to read the last I think the last like I guess kind of fantasies books that I read were um the fable books and I really liked those I was like you know because I was into the pirate mode at the time and those were really fun um can I recommend you okay my favorite dark fantasy at the moment is uh -huh. called Dark Rise oh, by yes, C.S. Picat and she's dark one of my favorite authors but she has very few books out there and there's only one in the trilogy out so far but it's really good <laughs> if you like dark fantasy and mystery and it's on my list because she talks about it all the time but I haven't read it yet I just I know like a lot about it already <laughs> I, I finished the book and then came out and told her the entire plot yeah so. yeah I know, that's, that's pretty cool I, I've again since coming on this platform um I've been learning about things like wish list and starting to build out mine and all that kind of stuff right. so I'll have to remember this and I will be resharing this on my YouTube channel in a couple weeks and then I'm posting all oh, your cool. information below. But with that said, using this again as a reference. So I will remember because I'm good. I don't have anything to write that down on, but I will rewatch this <laughs> when I post it and make a note of that. Yeah. Oh, let me ask while you have all your um, books in the background, do you have any of your books to show your book covers? <laughs> in the hand just reach <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's a good question so funny story we've had we've gone through several cover changes yeah, already these mostly oh, because i'm bad. broke <laughs> one um, right so we had uh we had three when we published our first three books last year we had um hired somebody on five rr how do you say that fiverr.com Fiver, and I, I he was so great yeah, I don't know. But he was like amazing and did a great job. And I was going to rehire him and he disappeared from the Internet. I could not find him again. So I ended up I didn't have any money and we wanted the um, and he was like really affordable. But like I couldn't I, I wasn't sure I wanted all the books to kind of have the same 
oh. feel like their covers to kind of go together and look like a set. And since he was gone, I didn't know if anybody would be able to do that. So I started over from scratch and did them myself on Canva. They're really great, though. But I've but only been able to... I don't have the first we, one in we my... We remade this one. Yeah, that one. And we remade the first of our other series. I haven't been able to order them since I uh, redid the covers. So oh, I don't have... Notes. But she's going to show you the ones with the little not for resale, that, the ones that she okay. really likes. So um, these are my favorites because they're just really pretty. The first one I had to redo it because I did this and then found out that someone else had used something almost exactly the same. And I thought I was being creative, but I just well, redid it. We, so we made this one. <laughs> Ooh, this is the good, second yeah. one. And we tried to make them match the feeling of the char main character of the book. Yeah. So she's like a so artist. Delphia. And, and then, there's the pirates and the prophecy. So here's like, you, you, oh, the lighting, the lighting is bad, is awful. but I don't know. And then this one, the angel and the star, and that's our last of the first series. That's not oh. the angel and the star. Oh no, it's not. No, this is the last of the first series. This is this is, this is, is a, the biggest. This one. is a two part. Okay, it this can be <laughs> continued, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah. Each book got bigger and bigger. And then, yeah, our pirate and books. Our pirates um, here's that the second didn't get third pirate books. Do we have the ace book? We don't have one. Oh, and we don't have our spinoff one yet. I have to earn some money so I can order my own books. That's the thing. <laughs> like, being an indie author is not <laughs> inefficient. And, I mean, it, you know, not cheap. There you go. That's right. what I meant. <laughs> no. It, but no, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a fee to at least getting things started. And then hopefully it can be the other way and bring in, you know, income down the line. But yeah, to get yeah, it started, uh, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, your covers, I was like trying to see the ones. Really cool. They look amazing from here. I love the colors. Yeah, it's because it's filmed at late at night. My my room is a little dark. They pop better. Uh -huh. Oh, it looks but. so good. I love that. We, we dragged my art light out here. Yeah. We'll like probably end up redoing ours at some point. But who did you get to do your covers? Did you do them yourself or do you have somebody? Oh, no. The funny thing is I am also an artist, but I do Ooh. pet portraiture, reverse glass painting, totally different than what I would want for my gotcha. covers. So I actually am working with two different cover designers. One I found through um, Fiverr. Fiverr. See, we're never going to figure that one out. How are we and um, <laughs> the other one I discovered by doing some research because I wanted a to try to find a totally different feel than what I've done in the past and mm -hmm. kind of did some research because different platforms like Facebook um, have different groups where you can, you know, cover designers will like show their ready-mades or, you know, you can kind of meet and greet other people. And I found one who actually is, was the um, designer of not the U.S. version, but one of the alternative versions for Six of Crows. Oh, wow. And yeah, and so I fell in love with her. So she's designing my um, young adult series, mm -hmm. and the other two are designed by the one I found through Fiverr, who's nice. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's pretty cool, and both of them are international, or you know, we're all I guess from different countries. So it's really kind of just fun to realize how small the world is and be able to work with artists from all around. But yeah, it took after. Um, after my first blunder where I also released um, my debut book with a different cover and I wanted it the way I wanted it. And so I had a friend kind of help me design it the way I wanted it. And then it wasn't selling. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to figure out it wasn't genre correct. Uh, so right. I had to like do more research and then I made the adjustments. And ever since then that has helped tremendously. <laughs> Oh, so one. now that's I do have to yeah. research genres, subgenres, what's trendy, and I know down the line there's I'll probably have to redo everything when trends change, but at least right yeah. now they they're working so far. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's what I think our next step too is, is just redo our genre. because I was like, oh yeah, I was able to re to redo them all on Canvas, so I can go ahead and publish them all and get them they, out there. Which they is they look better now, and they do look better. They look more like a set, but I still don't think that they're like, I guess, eye catching enough to yeah. the right right audience. <laughs> right. So yeah. yeah, we need to probably redo ours. I think that's like an endless journey for authors, isn't it? <laughs> it's like keeping oh, yeah. up with. Well, I mean, if you I know so many like even professionally published. Um, 
bucks through publishing houses yeah. they they'll re-release stuff obviously people like the collectible original covers but right. i mean harry potter has been re-released like i don't know how many times <laughs> every I time know. i look there's a new cover set and it's totally so different the big yeah. series a court of thorns and roses like changed halfway through oh that's their, right yeah they like oh, changed they halfway through yeah yeah they were like okay book three's out now we're changing everything yeah that's so At crazy. least finish the original series and then do the re-release. Right? But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. No but <laughs> uh, no, that's but it's nice being able to be an indie author and have the control of you know and say of saying, I want to change things now. I'm ready I for agree. it. I think this is the way I you know want it to go or head towards and see where yeah take you I agree way. I like it <laughs> I like having the complete control over everything nice. so where do you market your books I mean obviously here you have this platform where else are you found so um I have a Twitter account lately my life has been so crazy I haven't been very active on anything but we're forgot my password. trying to branch out oh man we're trying to branch out like we we're on instagram we're on facebook i have a website um she's on instagram i forgot my password i, I feel like oh, i've no. kind of spread myself like i've done a little bit here and a little bit there when i really haven't focused my efforts the way that mm -hmm. i should so i have some i'm gonna start like um I don't have an email list. I know you're supposed to have one of those. I need to start that. And I think that I'd like to start a YouTube, ch a YouTube channel. I was actually going to ask you like was... what kind of stuff um, you put on your YouTube channel. I'd like to check it out. And right now I'm kind of playing around with it because it's still relatively new, but I mean, the whole thing mm -hmm. is less is more with marketing and the rule of thumb is start small, master something and then expand, which I did the opposite yeah. of because I always do the opposite of what I'm supposed to do and right, do everything as as soon as I can so right now I'm still playing around with that I mean right now I repurpose these lives for reference for people and um which is kind of nice because it allows any potential viewers to meet all different other kind of art uh, authors and um yeah. because each time I talk to someone we have different topics we discuss and you never know what you can learn from that <laughs> I always learn something from each of these lives which is really fun but um, I've done series where I've kind of talked about just the writing process and giving tips and tricks of, you know, how you get your copyright, et cetera, so on. So again, reference, cool. but I also right now have a series that, uh, for this year that I was trying out because I am a fantasy writer and I want to attract people who like fantasy or mythology right. and stuff like that. So I have a whole little, they're like five minute videos and each one is on usually obscure, but mythological creatures, beings, and I release one a week um, for that. So that yeah, one's just kind of fun that. too. Me yeah. too. We'll have to start following your channel. That sounds fun. <laughs> we've we've yeah, batted around so many different ideas for our YouTube channel and like just can't really, neither of us are really like, we don't like to be on camera that much. Uh, hi. <laughs> But so, yeah, <laughs> I've kind of been shy of, you know, steering clear of that whole thing. But I know I need to not. I need to jump into it. Well, I mean, depending on the platform you decide to focus on next, um, each of them have different, you know, vibes. Obviously, Insta right. is visual based and Twitter is verbiage. And um, this is, you know, um, works well for authors who do, who are and are not comfortable in front of the screen because there are some authors who do very well just showing, you know, um, quotes of their books. I thought, I think I saw, if I remember looking at yours, you do a lot of quotes. Yeah, because I keep my face off the camera as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, and see, I, I, there, are, there are a number of authors that I know that prefer that. And then there are those who are on face all the time here. And that's perfectly fine too. But I know, at least in my experience, this is one of the newest platforms I'm on and it's definitely one of the most vibrant mm -hmm. book communities. So. Oh yeah. I love it. This is my favorite. Definitely. <laughs> of all of the ones that I've tried is TikTok is I stayed away from it for the longest time because I seriously, my, 
my teenage daughters, not this one, but my other ones were on it. And I saw the stuff they were looking at and they were like, not people I would want to follow. And I was just like, what? So I kind of outlawed TikTok for a while. But then when I found out about book talk, I was like, hmm, I should try book talk. (laughs) It's way different. That was a fun family reaction. Oh, yeah. I mean, it takes a little while to train the algorithm to what your uh, preferences right. are. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, I kind of was hesitant about this one. For I think at that point I was overwhelmed because I was trying to do too many things and yeah. kept pushing off, kept pushing off. And my fiance was like, mm, you really should, because he listens to all the mark. He's, he's in marketing. He's just like, in sales, okay. I mean. But so he's listening to all this kind of content and you know all these articles and podcasts talking about book talk community and how you know just this platform helps and he's like you really should do it <laughs> yeah. so I joined late in the game it feels like but I mean you have to start somewhere <laughs> yeah right oh my gosh I know that's like the story of my life I'm like well I'm 42 but hey here I am now <laughs> Yeah, no, it's mean, never too late to try something new, right? <laughs> oh yeah, some of some of the I think the most fun um, authors on this platform, no offense to everybody else, are some of these seventy plus authors who are getting on screen and you know they're just enjoying talking about their books, enjoying talking about what they love, and are amassing followings that way. And it's you know it's so inspiring that you could be pretty much any age and at least in yeah. the writing community and get out there and make your name (laughs) right (laughs) yeah it's awesome so let me ask do you or have a website or at the moment do you have any kind of landing page or where do you have want people to hub is we have a blog (laughs) yeah I have a website I haven't added anything to my blog for a while because I was in a slump but like I'm trying to get back into the swing of things but yeah I have a website it's viralandisbooks.com um and we have some I mean we have our blog we have our landing page for you know where people can click on the links to buy our books and then we also have um like just some fun little short stories about our characters that you don't really necessarily have to read the books for most of them. Like you can just see what, what mm-hmm. our writing style is like, you know, and enjoy some fun little shorts. Yeah. And then we've got, um, we have like, I don't know, just some other fun little things on there. Like we took one of our characters um, who has a really fun point of view and mm-hmm. we wrote um, a pronunciation guide for all of our characters names based from his point of view. So like, I mean, we just have some fun stuff. We try to stick on there. So people can get to a feel for our writing and a feel for our characters and our books. And see what you, what you need to do is take, create, maybe create exclusive little shorts on that same idea and use them to lure people. And I said, lure, lure people to your newsletter because that's the way to do it is, you know, say, Hey, I mean, that is really the way you do it is, Say, hey, you get these freebies if you join the newsletter and you're getting a taste of my writing and, you know, and see what you feel about that. And that's just a great way to inspire people to learn more about you. And newsletters are great in, you know, the theory, at least, because once you have them, you have their active attention. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's a great idea because... Yeah, because, like, I, I've struggled with what do I put in a newsletter? Like, I can sit down and, like I said, I write a novel in a month. But when it comes to, like, stuff like that, I'm just like, what if it's marketing related? But I can sit down and write short stories, just, you know, and that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and if you, yeah. depending on what um, platform you use for your newsletter, you can put some auto um introductory auto email so everybody gets that your email or email right. and say hey here's here's sample one a couple days later here's sample two a couple days later sample three and then you can always test short stories with them to k- encourage them to stay along with you periodically too but that's I a mean, good idea i know a lot of authors do that i have a couple short stories and then i usually give like the first few chapters of my first of series books too just so people get a taste of the series and yeah. decide which ones they may or may not want to uh, try. <laughs> that's a good idea. I like that. I'm going to do that because that's, yeah, that's a lot easier than come up. Okay, well, what's an idea for a newsletter? I don't have any <laughs> ever. <laughs> but yeah, I have ideas for short stories all the time. So, hmm. <laughs> short stories are fun. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, uh, another big popular thing for authors are swapping books in the sense of, 
Mm -hmm. um, you talk about someone else's book as a feature and they feature your, your book in their newsletter. And again, it allows cross exposure to new readership. That's so really that's another big thing. Too. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I, I think I need to sit down and like write a list of things and kind of plan out my marketing strategies better <laughs> instead of just yeah, like, I what can I post that. today? I had to do that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And kind of, again, figure out what I wanted to try to approach, what I needed to change, which was a lot of things, how I wanted to, <laughs> where I wanted to go with it. And um, then kind of research from there, how to learn what I'm missing. Where are my knowledge gaps, which were a lot. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping they, I'm hoping they get less and less, but like I said, I'm always still learning things. And I think I'm like a master or something ish. And then realized, nope, I was nowhere close. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, my gosh. I remember I was, like, so proud the first time I posted anything on TikTok and it got, what, like, 30 views or something. <laughs> I was like, look, guys, I did TikTok. <laughs> but come okay, a long way since that. I just, yeah. You know. <laughs> but, yeah, we're going to have to. Um, do you have a newsletter? and like, a, Do you have a website and a newsletter mm -hmm. that you send out? Yeah, I have everything linked. I have a, instead of a true link, because there's like Linktree is what a lot of people use here. Yeah. Um, I, because I already had a website, I created my own links page on the website, which has all that information from newsletters and ARC signups and, um, all you know, whatever is recently published or all, you know, all that jazz is on that one oh, page. So on, I tried to put that particular link to the links page on all my social media so you can easily access it so okay gotcha yeah i'm gonna have to check yours out because that sounds really good I'm, I'm, I'm still learning how to do all the technical stuff with the website i it's like just really bare bones right now because i haven't figured it all out yet and it stresses <laughs> me out yeah because then i'm like i don't know how to do this and she's like mom calm down <laughs> <laughs> it's a learning curve because I'm definitely right brain dominant. I like the arts, you know, be it writing or painting or whatnot. And technical stuff is definitely harder for me to like get used to, but I've been doing it because you kind of have to. So it's, right. it's a challenge to like get into all that. But once you learn it, you realize, you know, it gets easier. It's not as scary. And right. I mean, really, it is kind of essential to do so. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of is. When we survive today, you have to be able to do that. I just um, am starting to teach piano lessons again, and um, I was trying to work on a website for that the other day too. So it's like it's it's in everything you do. You really have to know how to do things nowadays. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So kind of going back, let me jump back to your particular book series. What is the premise of the first book? So I know now the genre, but now what is the premise of the first book? I'm not going to go into the others because I don't want to spoil anything, but how would you? What's the blur? So, um, okay, so yeah, so basically it starts in the Middle East. Um, it's in the future. It's set in the future, but it's kind of post-apocalyptic. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so society has kind of like, you know, fallen apart and people are trying to put the pieces back together. And um, there's a girl, Zara. She's the one that we told you about that she drew on the 4th of July. And um, she grows up and she's grown up in the desert in this little like nomadic clan. Mm -hmm. And Amir, who is our other main character, um, has grown up in the city. And he overhears um, kind of by design. Somebody kind of sets it up. They know things about Amir that he doesn't know about himself. And so they, they make sure <laughs> that he overhears this conversation um, involving a, a basically a government plot um, that could potentially start a war. And he, being who he is, uh, just takes off and is like, I have to go stop this plot and thinks that he like knows thinks more than he does. He can and, save everything. Yeah, and that he could just like stop this whole thing and doesn't want his family to be in danger. And so he goes out into the um, into the desert to go to this other city, which is, you know, over the border into another country, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, they run into each other. I don't want to give too much away, but it's an amazing, she movie. finds out things about herself. He finds out things about himself. And it turns out that um, they are chosen ones and they yeah. are supposed to be um, 
they have to find other chosen ones and there's like this intergalactic war and they have to stop it basically. So that's the, pretty much the premise for the whole thing. <laughs> and, um, you know, as you get into other books, um, you know, that brings in more, more of the, it's not just like one chosen one or something like that. There's like several yeah. of them that have to band that together to help it. And yeah. And there's like a secret organization and um, other planets involved and, superpowers mm -hmm. and stuff like that so <laughs> I, love it. I love that absolutely I love that well while sorry my mind always kind of processes things in the background while I'm always you know talking to people oh, yeah. but That's here's something you. that might actually work for you too I've been one of the things I've been educating myself on is the concept of character art and how you know you can utilize character art by giving a free um, art print of one of your characters with a signed copy if they buy directly through you. Because I know, at least for me, when you order direct, it allows me to make more of a cut and that helps me. But then what, oh, what's the yeah. point? Um, I love yeah, that. And since you already have an artist who sounds like she's good at characters, since I'm That's only so animals, good. so that I can't do my own character art, but you already have an artist. You could do, you know, Character art by one of the authors for you know that is a great idea. Talk. She has done so much too. Like I'm always I telling her, I'm like, you need to sell your art because she's amazing and she just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> I, I mean, it. since the since the original one that she's drawn, like her oh, yeah. her art has just like taken off and like she's unreal. <laughs> so that's a okay. really great idea. I love that. Here you go. Now you have to create an and link it somehow a author's Etsy account where you sell signed copies and prints. <laughs> That's a great idea. Boom. <laughs> See, you're so smart. I'm making, I'm making notes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I mean, as an artist, like I use Etsy to sell um, prints and my pet, port pet portraitures, but I also do it for, which is probably really confusing for people. I should have split them in two, but I didn't want to and now I'm too lazy, it's too late. But I also sell my um, signed copies there. And so, you know, because I don't have character art at the moment, I'm actually looking into different artists to help me design them for different purposes. But mm -hmm. I have like bookmarks and stickers designed with like images that I bundle as like little tag ons that you're you're buying a signed copy from an art author. And here's a little extra. And that's what I do as I my love bundle. That. Yeah. And it costs like nothing too. like. <laughs> For, yeah. for the extra art that's amazing yeah. that's a great idea you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> i need to talk to you more often <laughs> well, like I, said, I, I like these things because it's it's not only helpful for each other but it's helpful for anybody in the writing community who yeah. pops on or finds you know these especially if once i repost them you know it helps them out because everybody's trying to learn and improve and get better mm -hmm. and you know that's the nice thing about yeah. at least the book talk community we all want each other to succeed, it sounds like, more often than not. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, a little bit of friendly jealousy. I know. I I, I will admit that. But for the most part, <laughs> we want each other to succeed. Right. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you're happy for him, but why can't it be me once? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. But anywho, no, I mean, I have, I've been very fortunate to meet some great people in this community that have you know, throw me a bone periodically too. When I'm like, I'm floundering. Someone help me with this. And someone right. will be like, I actually know, I know how to help you. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it. If there's anything yeah. I can do. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's just, again, it's just nice to be able to swap ideas. Yeah. It's so great. I love this community for that. <laughs> so going forward, once you finish your prequel books, or you may have already finished your prequel books, are you going to leave this universe or are you going to expand kind of like the Grisha verse or, you know, some of these others? Are you going to continue um, to expand yeah, we're it? Or are you gonna, no, <laughs> we're still, <laughs> we do have stuff outside of this universe going on. We actually, we have started a spinoff series. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So we have the five books, Lone Star Diary series. Then we have the three book Red Beard trilogy and which is the prequel. But then we have a spinoff novel that we published, which comes at the end of everything. And it's the same universe and it actually has time travel in it. So we're able to like revisit some of the other, you know, fun characters that we got to know already. And 
we we put the first book of that out and had so much fun with it. And that one was actually from first person. That's actually written from one character's point of view. And I think we're going to publish more books in that as like a spinoff series because mm-hmm. it was just so much fun to write from his point of view. It He's was. a great character. So yeah, I we're not done. And plus we just love them. You know, they become a part of you and yes. we're just not ready to leave them. <laughs> I know. When Maybe I when ever. I when I was completing my first series, I it was hard. It was hard to say goodbye. And it was yeah. I knew this was always where I wanted to end it. I knew I how I wanted to end it. And it's, you know, and I I have ideas of maybe a couple like prequel spin-offs that kind of are like hundreds of years prior of ideas yeah. and stuff, a little more of the his about the history. But it was still hard to say goodbye to those characters because you get to know them throughout the whole series and eventually yes. you're like, I guess this is it. I guess we part yeah. ways. <laughs> and so, so attached. I know. I mean, we're we're writing some other well, I am. I was kind of doing some she's, she's kind of doing, doing her own, own thing own right, now, right now and I'm kind of doing my own right now. But when I'm we still in the plotting stage. Yeah, but when we when we're working on the rest of this um book verse we're gonna do it together you know but uh yeah we we're venturing off and doing some other things as well we just we're not ready to say goodbye to them (laughs) Uh, especially if after you've worked so hard on not just your characters but the world building or universe building essentially that some people put in you know that's that's hard to kind of say this is it (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) i know like right now Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. What were you gonna say? Uh, I was oh, just saying, like, say... the series that I'm working on right now are both multi-worlds fantasy, and oh, wow. you you build, <laughs> you spend a lot of time to build that out, but then, on the other hand, I'm kind of, I, I realized it might be nice to retract in a future series and just focus on a continent or a world. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might be nice. It's, I know the world building, I think is, it's, it's hard. I am more of a character focused person mm-hmm. and the other um, stories that I'm writing right now are, um, no, the other stories that I'm writing right now are, um, so my other daughter's standing over there <laughs> asking me a question. They're um, requiring a lot more world building than what I, because I focus so much on the character arcs in this series. And it's not that there wasn't world building, but it takes place in, I mean, yeah, it's in the future, but everything had kind of come to a halt with the the whole apocalypse thing that happened. So it's not like that technologically advanced. It's not that, that different than the world that we know, you know? So I didn't have to do quite as much, but I have to with the other ones. So it's, it's kind of a stretch for me. And with mine, I have to focus equal amounts on amount on character and world building. Yeah. And I don't know why I decided to go sci-fi with this, she's, because that means extra planets. She's doing basically like a space opera it's, kind of thing now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is brave. <laughs> <laughs> it's brave. Yeah, no, I, I my my young adult, it, since it's multiverse, not only I'm, you know, dealing with the world, but it's also dimensions, and then I have to decide, you know, do I want to change gravity do i want to deal with time shifts do i want to do all this kind of stuff in and among the actual ecosystem thankfully i'm more ecosystem forward since it is a fantasy than some of these more heavy sci-fi stuff it's fantasy with a few sci-fi undertones like the concept of wormholes and travel Mm -hmm. between planets but even still dragons unicorns elves which is you know all that that's that's more my my jam (laughs) Yeah, you're brave. Wow, that sounds awesome. I love really it. <laughs> brave kind of or, or regretful. I mean, I've I've told some people before that if anybody ever saw the back of my desk, you have so many diagrams and um, images and pins and stuff like that. It kind of was like one of those people trying to find some serial killer out there. That's what it kind of looks like. And one of those stereotypical wow. crazy boards just trying to figure out things. And... Yeah, I don't, I don't envy you talking about playing with time because <laughs> I've tried no. that for a book and it was she, so complicated and I was just like, I was so happy to be done with that draft because I was just like, okay, I think I got it right. I think I kept all my rules like, I am never working a time 
time travel. Yeah, I said I would. I swore it off. I was like, I will never dapple in time travel ever. And then I was like, if I got this great story idea, and I'm like, what am I doing? It's <laughs> because the ending to our series is really bittersweet, and we didn't, we weren't ready to say goodbye. <laughs> So we're like, time travel. We were just, how did we even come up with that idea? I think we were just driving in the car one day talking about, talking we were about like, it how... would be nice if this could happen. And then we're like, let's make it happen. And yeah. Yeah. We were like, oh, they're books. That's how I come up with a lot of this stuff. <laughs> we talk a lot. Yeah. The wonderful thing of being masters of your own universe. Right. <laughs> Isn't it great? Would you would acknowledge that, yes, there are certain rules. Once you make them, you have to keep straight or else your readers are going to be like, right. Yeah. You you exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, that that's pretty cool. I mean, venturing off in all different kind of side stories. Do you is it hard for you to keep track of what project you're working on? Hmm. Not really. I'm like, I guess I don't know. Maybe from being a mom of all these kids, I'm kind of a multitasker. My mind's kind of all over the place, and I'm a mood writer. So like. I might be in the mood for my zombie book right now. And then I might be in the mood for like this other one over here or later, you know, like I even actually just wrote, <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you this in like two weeks. Um, we had this little story idea and it was like a contemporary romance idea, not my genre, but I was like, Oh, I want to write this down. Cause it sounds like fun. So it just, I just popped it out in like two weeks is like, it's not very long, but it's like little more than a, yeah. It's like, I don't know. And like all the things, pages. all the things I'm working on are so completely different. Like one is like a medieval fantasy in, in the middle of a war. And then the other is like sci-fi space opera. Yeah. And Woo. so, yeah, we're, we're kind of like mood readers and mood writers and just kind yeah. of all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I noticed for me, my personal spirit experience of releasing two series simultaneously is that um, obviously I'm working on one book when I'm writing new materials and I'm a morning writer, yeah. morning writer. So writing something in the morning, but then the afternoon is whatever needs to be, be it obviously the marketing advertising, but it could be the editing and formatting. And so jumping mm -hmm. from morning to the evening, I could be jumping between three different three different books of the same series or flipping series entirely. And I'm like reading and all of a sudden I'm realizing I'm flipping the main characters. I'm looking at the right one, but I'm flipping them when I'm saying it loud oh. because I'm so used to the other one that I was working on earlier that day that it gets a little, conf sometimes I just have to like pause and be like, okay, what book, what world, what planet, what magic system are we on? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think the hardest thing was coming from third person to first person because I was supposed to be writing first person, but I was so used to writing in third person. And then I, I would realize that I had just written, like, entire page in third person. I would go, oh, I got to go back and change that. <laughs> that was kind of hard. I think – uh, Yeah, I, I mean, think learning to kind of stick to whatever – like you said, mm -hmm. approach you're doing for writing, you want to make sure it's continual. It sounds the same throughout. And so, especially early writers, right. you could be evolving how you approach writing. And I know my first book, you know, sounds a little bit di different than the second one because I got a little better at the writing craft and et cetera. And so now right. my new series have definitely at different sounds. Hope. But I think I definitely have a flavor of what is my style of writing even though each book yeah. evolves a little bit with its sound. Right, exactly. And that's what I was saying. So I was like, with the, with the contemporary romance, uh, we have to figure out how to plug this in. Go get your little strip thingy. Ah. My, my phone doesn't have a very good battery. So it's like going, we're watching it go down. And I'm like, <laughs> Sarah, go get the charger. It starts lagging. And that's yeah. when we. Um, but she's going to go get a little power strip. Um, yeah, and I totally at the end of the hour too. So see, an hour goes fast when you're just trying. I know. <laughs> it does but yeah what was I what were we talking about oh yeah um we were talking about oh shoot I lost my train of thought now I don't remember what we were even talking about <laughs> keeping your train of thought between books I know that was one of the topics but but yeah yeah so let me ask while I we, you know we, you, you still have some battery and we're winding down the hour what would you want other potential readers to know about you and your, you know, your work? And is there anything else? I know we talked a little bit about where you can be found and your 
um, you know, website and everything, but is there anything you would want people to know about you both and your work that we may not have covered so far? Um, well, can you think of anything? I mean, uh, what was the question? If, if, is there anything that we want, like, potential readers to know about us and our work that we haven't really covered before? Um, I mean, I think that it's LGBTQ inclusive. I was just going to say, so our, our work I'm is LGBTQ myself, and we value diversity, like, big hey. time. So, like, in our series, um, you'll find, like, like I said, it starts in it the starts Middle East. In... There's an entire completely amazing family um, from the Middle East that is huge characters in this book. Um, one of our favorite, our, pretty much everybody who's read it, everybody's favorite couple by the end of the series is our um, male-male couple. Um, oh, gosh, I love them so much. Um <laughs> And I mean, it's we good. have good. Want- interracial relationships. Like we have, like just such a variety, and like um, pretty They're much, just amazing. We, we want everybody who reads it to be able to feel like they can kind of relate, you know, and see mm-hmm. themselves in the literature. And we want to like be able to attract um, a lot of just different kinds of people from different walks of life. So that's like something that we really have focused on yeah. strongly. I know there's a, there is a huge number of people who are just thirsting for the next, you know, book that does, you know, have relatability and not everybody has relatability with all these mainstream books. So it's nice right. to hear of more varied work, be it um, uh, race, religion, orientation. And so that's always nice. And even in my work, I try to touch on diversity in different ways and, you know, question concepts um that you know sometimes they're touchy touchy concepts of you know um racism sexism all that kind of stuff in some of my books but again it brings back to the point of diversity equality um and kind of making those points too in different ways but that's always nice to hear yeah yeah that's awesome yeah i love it when authors and like um what our author uh rick riordan you know with the whole Percy Jackson universe and everything that goes with it. He has so much diversity. And that was one thing that we just love about his writing that we always, there's just such a variety of characters and they're all just dealing with human, human problems. You know, it's not like, like we don't really, I mean, yeah, they, they might deal with a little bit of sexism or a little bit of, um, you know, homophobia or, you know, a little bit of this and that here and there. But for the most part, we don't make anything like that. Like our focus, we just, it's a bunch of, it's, it's just people from all over the place, all different kinds and of people, just all experiencing it, it's why it's wrong. Yeah. Just experiencing the same kind of things together. So just having the human experience. So like, yeah, I love that. but it's fun. <laughs> Fantastic. Was there any questions that you have at this point? Um, Can you think oh. of anything? <laughs> you're good you're good you're good you think you always get to ask these questions you're like uh i did not come prepared <laughs> right i know you that yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's pretty cool so i guess what i'm gonna do now is say thank you both for joining me this week and if you ever want to you know come back again and do another one of these just let me know i try to do them once ish a week sometimes sometimes i'll squeeze in a second one i'm really guilty but but yeah i do this weekly and just let me know because i love to talk to you especially you know in the future when you start doing some of these other spin-offs and separate projects that would be kind of interesting to hear a little bit more about them when they release as well Oh, thank you. And thank you so much. And we're awesome. excited to fun. Um, I want to read yours. We're genuinely excited about your books. They sound they, amazing and they look amazing. I'm like, I'm seriously, I just I've love been looking at the covers. I have to. Um, I love those covers. That's one thing I wish that our cover were I, mean, I didn't the, the colors right, I think, on Canva. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're still cool, but like, I don't know. I see those things and I'm. I've actually been sitting here thinking about. <laughs> Too, they're so beautiful. How I would arrange my books. Yeah, I mean, books for or her shelves for your books too. Yeah, I will. <laughs> well, I mean, like I like we talked about earlier, you can always redo and alter your books periodically and re-release right. them, and you know, with a slightly different version. And fun fact, fun trick is 
a few authors here have figured out the whole concept of the reverse posters. So if you ever do a little bit more and decide you want more FaceTime in front of the screen, that helps you so you don't always have to do that inverse filter because that's oh. nice. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Yeah. I have to figure that out. That's neat. Canva. Canva. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was really great. Well, thank you so much. We well, really appreciate thank you. Thank you so much. Us. And thank you for everybody who chimed in. And again, um, in a couple weeks, I'll repurpose this on my YouTube, putting all your content below so people can find you. And I'll let you know when that happens too. Okay. That Thanks. sounds awesome. awesome. Thanks. This it was, was fun. nice meeting you. It was really fun. Nice meeting you too. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Don't know how to close.